This is another similar example. Let's try giving a name to this. I'm not sure which one's going to get priority. Alphabetical again? That's right. If there's no other way to choose the priority, you can do it with alphabetical. Again. So if you had two carbon substituents, then you'd have to do, you'd still go by alphabet? I, I, don't, I guess I'm getting, why am I getting, why do we take the atomic number of some things? Is that only when the it's a non-cyclic? Okay, yeah. So that atomic number business is only for R and S and E and Z. Okay. The atomic number business is only for R and S and okay. E and Z. It doesn't apply to anything else. Okay. So. so the atomic number idea is kind of totally separate from numbering the parent chain in IDPAC. They're just two totally different systems. Two nitrobenzene. Good, you figured it out. B comes before N in alphabetical order, so we're going to call this the number one. Neither of these has a common name associated with it when it's on a benzene, so we'll just give, call this benzene. How about if we were going to use the O, M, and P system? Nitrobenzene. Now remember that with the O M and P position, uh, system, oh, excuse me, O. Mm -hmm. O bromo. Yeah. Sounds like you got it. So uh, yeah. go, go ahead and say that one more o time. O bromo P nitrobenzene. Ah, still a problem there. Remember that if with the O M and P system, you should only need one locator. Okay. If you give a single locator, that tells you where both of uh, the substituents are. So. Where, where is the nitro compared to the bromine? Is it in the O, the M, or the P position? It's in, uh, the nitro's in the um, O position. That's right. And for that matter, where is the bromine in position to, in comparison to the nitro? Oh. Yeah. So if one substituent is in the O position compared to the other substituent, then the other substituent is also in the O position compared to the first substituent. Right, I see. So we just call it O bromo nitro benzene. Remember that the O position is just the position that's directly adjacent to the substituent. Well, if substituent A is adjacent to substituent B, then substituent B must be adjacent to substituent A. That's the advantage of this whole O and P system that you only need the one letter. All right. So all we need to say is that one letter, O bromo nitrobenzene. So either of these would be an acceptable name. So presumably on a multiple choice test, they'd only give you one of these of the choices. Okay. Are, are we still in chapter 21? Is that what we're working on right now? That's right. Okay. We're going over, uh, so that's the chapter that introduces benzene. Okay. So one important thing about introducing any functional group is to know the nomenclature. So that's right. Now, for comparison, I wanted to show you that the nomenclature here would be different, because one of these substituents on benzene has a common name. Mm -hmm. Which one of these gets a common name when it's on benzene? The methyl group. That's right. What's that called? Toluene. Toluene. Yeah, toluene. So the name here would be 
two bromo toluene or O bromo toluene. So it's important to compare this example and this example to see how they're different from each other. The difference is that in this case, neither substituent had a common name. And in this case, one of the substituents on benzene does have a common name. Um, if there's no common names, you just use benzene as the suffix. But if there is a common name, then it gets the suffix. Okay. Also, if you're using something, if, if something is giving you the common name, then by definition, it's the number one carbon. This has to be the number one carbon because it's giving us the common name, even though methyl, even though methyl comes after bromo in alphabetical order. That's why I said that we only use alphabetical order for determining the numbering if there's no other way okay. to determine it. Usually you don't need alphabetical ordering for the numbering because usually there's some other way to determine the numbering. So we don't base the numbering here in alphabetical order. It's true that B comes before M, but because the whole suffix here was based on the methyl group, it should be the number one. Okay. So I wanted to show that um, we only have used the alphabetical system to figure out the numbering here because neither of these was getting the suffix. And in this case, we only need one number because by definition we know that the toluene methyl is on the number one, whereas here we needed two numbers because neither of these is getting the suffix. Okay. So this compares, so what we've been covering is what to do with what are called di-substituted benzenes. We've been covering the nomenclature for di-substituted benzenes. Well, there's two different cases. One case is when there's no common name and then you name it like this. And the other case is when there is a common name, and then you would name it like this. One thing that's still true, though, is anytime we use O, M, M, or P naming, we only need one locator. Yeah. So we can do now some polysubstituted derivatives with more than two substituents. And the, the, the rules are basically the same. If one group imparts a special name, you name the molecule as a derivative of that special name. But if no group imparts a special name, then you list the groups in alphabetical order, giving them the lowest sets of numbers. So let's try using the principles that we've seen before to name this. Now, would we determine, now, we have to start at uh, the methyl group because that's the name of our, our, of our um Yeah, that's giving us our common name here. That's, that's right. So does that mean now the nitro group has priority because it's a, a two as opposed to a four? Uh, let's see, I guess uh, priority here doesn't really matter very much because okay. we already know that it's the toluene methyl group. It's sure. getting the suffix. Okay. But when we name it. You mean what order are we going to list them in? Yeah. Okay, that's right. Well, the only priority that matters is the one that gets the suffix. All the other substituents always just get listed in alphabetical okay. order. So P chloro nitro toluene. Good. Let's try naming it with numbers rather than O N and P. Four chloro. Mm -hmm. Two nitro toluene. Good. By the way, check your spelling there. It's toluene. Yes. So it's not T O U, but T O L. Toluene, but that's the right name. Four chloro. Two nitro. Um, on a multiple choice test, there probably won't be any trick questions where the wrong answer is just misspelled. But anyway, it's toluene. <laughs> So that's 4-chloro, gotcha, it was that perfect <laughs> spelling. 4-chloro-2-nitro-toluene. 
Let me work that out. Good. So it was good that you checked it to see whether any of the substituents get a common name. And there was one that gets a common name here, which is the methyl group. So we automatically give, use toluene as our name. And this must be the number one carbon, because the common name is coming from it. Uh, and then, should we number down the left or down the right? Well, we should number down the left to give the lowest possible set of numbers. And then what order do we list these in? Well, we list the substituents in alphabetical order. We didn't need alphabetical order to decide what the numbering would be. But we still use alphabetical order just to decide what order we're going to list things in. Notice that you don't list them by number. Just because this gets the smaller number doesn't mean it comes first in the list. There are lots of little ins and outs and all this naming business here. 